What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is May 27th, 2021. This is episode 50 of Got Our Attention Podcast. Welcome. I am here with Bruno and Brian today. Welcome, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it's good to have you Glad to be here. Super stoked. Super stoked. Sick. I mean, you should be. You should always yeah. be super stoked. I mean, that's a that's a way of life, especially for you. Yeah. I feel like you are one of those people that have to live that way all the time. I'm, I'm just I'm just looking forward to your next um, movie preview that you do. One man, one desire. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We like the voice how you did it before. <laughs> Don't try to be the movie voice. Don't try to be the movie. The voice. whole idea is to do a new fresh voice, uh, which is what you had. Got it. Not. And then and then you did that disastrous thing that you just did, which was wow, disaster. like people just turned off the podcast. If that's why they turned it off, then. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, we're getting close to con season. Uh, there are things that we'll be discussing uh, coming up on that. Uh, something that actually uh, got uh, caught my eye. <laughs> This week, I see what I see what you did there. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, something that caught my eye this week is um, we always talk about something before the news. It's not necessarily related to most other other type of stuff. I mean, it's all kind of related. They're all kind of the same thing at this point. Um, but uh, what was something pretty cool was a BBC article, and uh, they had reported that a man that didn't have vision. He had, he had lost, he lost his uh, sight back like 40 years ago, I think um, was able to get a thing called optogenetics. It's a type of therapy uh, where they take proteins, this algae protein, and they stick it in the back of his eye. Uh, and it is, it enables him to see. Uh, so they said that um, it had been, like I said, 40 years from that. And he was able to identify like lights, um, on like painted strips like he could uh like he could actually see stuff again which was like crazy because he wasn't able to before um so it's pretty cool for science it's not crazy it's science it's science pretty cool for science so it's like we're getting to the point where like we potentially could like fix blindness which is pretty insane and this is like Almost uh, organically, I guess you could say, rather than like, you know, cybernetics where like we're implanting like fake like machinery in your face or something. They'll probably get there before. Which they've been doing that for they've been doing that for to recover sight as well. Yeah. So it's just pretty interesting that, you know, we do see things like this happening, even though uh, we don't really get to see things like this all the time because, you know, everything else in the world. I see what you did there. So <laughs> everything in the, so in the world is. Uh, you guys had the option between an organic way to fix an eye or they could give you a really cool bionic eye that has like extra features mm. which one can i get one of both oh, bi- oh, bionic eye every time i bought one of like both. just like pluck pluck my perfectly good meat eyes out and put in some bionic eyes i'm like i i am ready to live the cyberpunk future now well yeah because we didn't get it with cyberpunk 2077 oh yeah <laughs> I had to steal that from Brian. And while we're at coming. it, put the neural net in so that I can like control <laughs> the neural with my brain. Yeah, there and, you like, go. yeah, that'd be fantastic. Do you Just guys, display what I'm looking at right onto my eyes. Directly. Yes, do know that one of the things in Cyberpunk 2077 was the ability for one person to stat out their cybernetics so much that they could legitimately just kill everybody who had other cybernetics implanted in them. Right. <laughs> so like it has its downside. I mean, I mean that no, that there's definite downsides to having like completely cybernetic sight by the fact that like you're driving along and then all of a sudden decides to like put up ads <laughs> right in front of yeah, your face. You get hacked. I mean, and I'm not even talking about like I'm not even talking about like hacking. I mean, that's something that uh, showed up in a couple of different sci fi black mirror. Uh, well, not just not just I mean, books too. Uh, the concept the of that you're walking along and ads just display right in your eyesight. Uh, yeah. I mean, imagine, I, mean, I think, I think I'll say, imagine getting ransomware. <laughs> yeah. Right. You can't access your memory. You know. One Bitcoin to be able to see again. <laughs> yeah. You forgot everything you learned. You don't know how to do your job anymore. <laughs> We've disabled your legs. 
God. <laughs> if you oh, do not man. pay 10 Bitcoin, we will not oh, re-enable your leg. No, I, no I, actually, I think it's the opposite. They wouldn't make you pay any Bitcoin. They'd be like, you have to donate 14 hours of Bitcoin mining in order to re- receive the use of your legs back. Yeah, and by doing <laughs> of your that, cyber net, of your cyberware, you'll build that by uh, walking <laughs> using those legs. So if you want to keep your legs, then you'll have to continue walking for them. Imagine like every <laughs> Saturday afternoon, you have to like sit down somewhere and like run disty fragmentation on your brain. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta gotta run Windows cleanup. <laughs> Windowsstat running on your PC on your on your. Yeah. Oh shit! I'm running out of storage space. I gotta delete some stuff. What happens when you hit 100? percent I mean, do you? <clears throat> how do you get rid of that? Like, what stops? I I mean, you just crash. Hey, it's listen. Over. It's like all those memories of like. Oh, well, I remember what I ate for breakfast for the last 10 years. Nuke that stuff. Out. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be an um kill. Oh, it only only recovered like 1% of space. Shoot. You'd have an um kill for, for old memories. <laughs> I just convert it all because a lot of it you can like, you can imagine it. Like you could, you can see it because of how much detail you recall. So I would just be like, can I convert it just into text? Just like the text information and that's yeah, it to save but, space. So you're saying like text to speech <laughs> almost? space. <laughs> Or like speech you keep to text. saving space because you keep reducing the resolution of the pictures and video. I'm fine if I just want to remember key things and just give me give me the text. Every conversation ever. Nobody can refute <laughs> anything anymore. Like, no, it's all in here. I remember. But what happens when I your mean, when your metadata gets all messed Mike, up? Mike. Yeah, Mike would just uh, routinely edit stuff and delete things out so that he doesn't remember what he said. That's fair. I mean, I do that already. I don't need I don't need cybernetics to do that. <laughs> it's never a metaphor with you guys. It's really not. It's really cool that oh, they man. helped uh, help help to restore sight to uh, to a bind man, as it says in our document. A bind man. I mean, Great. <laughs> That's uh, my typo in the show notes. Yeah, it is. What uh, it is. Anyway, take her uh, away. Yeah, well. Moving right on into uh, future things, although not super futuristic. Yeah, Rumorville, really. Um, though I guess it's a decently strong. I don't know. It seems like an okay, like a, like a, a decently substantiated rumor. Um, Netflix is reportedly trying to get into video games. This isn't like unheard of because if you think about it, if you've used Netflix before, you'll remember things like um like Black Mirror Bandersnatch. Yes, which is like an interactive yes. like game to some degree. I didn't think it was that great, but I enjoyed it, it. Did you get all the endings? Yeah, it was an interesting. It was an interesting like experiment. It was it was cool to kind of like see it. I was like, oh, I could see how this could be cool. Um, well, apparently now they're looking for an executive um, in that's a veteran in the game industry to like actually come on board. Um, but like, I don't know, like it, it doesn't really describe what they're going for. Like, are they going for more interactive shows slash movies? Are they going for actual gaming? Like, right now, it's mostly just speculation. Like, would it be a Witcher interactive series? Would that even be good in comparison to what The Witcher already is? Um, like, what what would they do? But it is something that they're apparently working toward. Yeah, I mean, the... The choose your own adventure stories like I remember back being uh, when I was a kid, like the Goosebump series, like they had the normal Goosebump books and then they had the choose your adventure ones where you literally could like die essentially from reading it. And uh, those are really cool. Like always, always anytime I've done a, like a choose your adventure was really, really awesome. And then Banner Snatch to me was like really neat for them. The fact that they've recorded all these different kind of scenarios and you know you could interactively decide the the ending of this movie. Um, which I thought was pretty neat. And I would like to see more stuff like that. Yeah, it's just that just doesn't seem like something that has very much of a life. Yeah, Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that's going to be how how much how much of an audience do you have to (laughs) affect? Like, because if you take a series, right, because Bandersnatch was how many episodes? That was just one movie. Just that's it. Okay, one movie, but how long was each segment for the choose your own part? Uh, it depended on the on the the part of the movie, but there was some that were like some were quick, almost like uh like playing like a telltale telltale tell telltale telltale uh, game. Good gravy. Uh, but there was also some parts where that were like so a little longer. To shoot so one movie, they have to like triple 
the shooting budget. Oh, for sure. Essentially. Yeah. So the, the exact stats and, for it are 150 minutes of unique footage divided into 250 segments. Yeah. There you go. So to do that on the regular basis for each like movie you produce and then spending the, I just, how much of an audience do you have for that? Like when I, when I saw this article, I was like, heck yeah, we've always been saying game pass is the Netflix of games. And then now Netflix would be awesome if they were the Netflix of games that they could have like a streaming game service. And don't get me wrong. Better banner snatch is a cool idea. And yeah. it definitely had people that were enthusiastic about it. But I think, I think some of that enthusiasm and a good portion of the audience, and I'm not saying majority, I'm just saying a good portion of their audience was because of the novelty yeah, of sure. this. And, you know, and if, and if they started doing one of these, like every quarter, like four, even four of them a year, which isn't all that lot. If you think about the Netflix for games, but if, if, if they did even four of those a year, I think the, the audience on it would drop off like a stone. Like you would have the people that are really into it. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. And you'd have the curious. Well, not just curious. I mean, the enthusiastic curious. They're like, that's pretty cool. How long can they keep this up? How many different ways can they do it? What new twist are they going to put on it this time? Because like it is just a series of videos and you're choosing which way to go. Yeah. I mean, they'd have to have a lot of big names and they'd have to like, like you said, they're shooting double, triple the budget because they're having to film all sorts of ways and how much content can you put out that quick and be good, not just like a really crappy well, movie. Keep an audience because yeah. I mean, there's you're just not going to keep all the audience because there's a significant portion that is just coming out of there, the novelty. And once once more than two of these show up, the novelty has gone. Yeah. The other thing I noticed, too, is and, with the Bandersnatch series, um, you basically couldn't use this movie unless you had a, a device that you had a controller to use to your TV. So if you had a smart TV, ooh, you could do it. Ooh. But if you were casting from your phone, you can't do it because there's no remote to like interact with the screen. So that's another oh, that's, downfall with this type of scenario with this. type. Yeah, of game. that's terrible. That's like, OK. We all know Jackbox games, right? Yep. You control Jackbox games with your cell phone. And it's very easy because you just get a website and you literally Super easy. anybody can have it. Like you just put up your phone. As long as you have a smartphone, you can get a website. You go there, you log in with the code and it you're into the system. Um, that's right. A cool idea. And, and that's that's definitely the way to do it. But I say that for a reason. How many people remember that Sony released a game with the same basic concepts? I guess just one, because you're the only person here that probably knows that. <laughs> right. And they made the control, they made the login a lot more complex. They made the controls a lot more complex. It was still mostly on your cell phone. It's not like they went to the point where you had to have a controller. Uh, but I mean, you had to like use the camera on your cell phone and stuff like that. And they, it was, it was a cool set of games, but the process of getting connected and using it was convoluted enough that it just never took off. Yeah. And if you may, and that's still just using your cell phone. Like you said that, that they've got, if they require a controller, mm -hmm. they got to get away from the controller. It's yeah. like, even if they just used who has Netflix and a smartphone and does not have some type of Netflix app on their smartphone. Well, right. And that's, and that's the thing is if you have the app, you still can't do it because you're having to cast it to a TV. Not, but they no, should no, no, be able no. to integrate that. I'm in. not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying casting it. I'm saying use your use your TV, play Netflix on it, and then you use your app. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you guess know, it, your app knows that that you're that you're not casting it, but that you're playing it, and then you, and then it presents options on your cell phone. Oh yeah, and apparently it doesn't even let you cast Banner uh, Snatch because of this. So it's like, like they don't even let you even try. So well, yeah, but I, forget all that. I'm just saying using the phone only as a controller. I got you. Because you can use it through the Netflix app. You like you you just use Netflix through your Xbox or through your smart TV or whatever. And the app knows that your Xbox is like playing that movie. And then so then the then the app on your uh, phone just presents the options. And you click on them. I mean, yeah. that that is 
Easy. I was going to say that the, is user accessible. The only other option they would have is to provide a controller that you can plug in anywhere. Sounds like Stadia. So that's like, yeah, <laughs> like literally the same and I same legit, loop that I everyone can touch is my in. Stadia. Whoa! I don't know. I what are you? Don't right don't now. show me your Stadia. I don't need to see you touch your Stadia. I still have not hooked it up and used it, and I have a Stadia Pro account. Yeah. It's sad. So yeah, it's you it's know what else is sad? An interesting thought. What Stadia? Oh, wow. Yeah. I also have a uh, very easy and reach uh, Star Wars, the old Republic. <laughs> wow. As well as Adobe Creative Suite 2. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. I even know why I have that up there. So, uh, but, yeah, they, they need to make it easier. So rolling in to last week's topic, which was hot tub streams, the 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 risky business hot tub streams that everybody was talking about, that even Twitch uh, risque uh, risque. Yeah. And then uh, what well, actually Twitch was kind of like even banning and, and trying to like hush people even saying the word hot tub on Twitch. Uh, so after last week, uh, they had made up a new announcement this week uh, or this past week over the last week. Uh, that they actually created a new category. Uh, the new category is hot tubs. It's called pools, hot tubs, and beaches. Uh, and this way, this is their way to, uh, as they said, not, this wasn't intended to be a long-term uh, solution. Um, but for now, because of what we said before, the terms of service said that um, you have to wear something that's cont contextually exception or exceptional for the, what you're doing. Uh, and wearing bikinis, you just can't sit in your house playing video games. It's not it doesn't make sense. Um, so now pools, hot tub and beaches is where you can wear swimwear uh, to be contextually except uh, to be a contextual exception uh, to this policy. So they uh, they are allowing this as a new category. And it lit it's literally um, one of the top categories right now on Twitch. If you go to Twitch you know, TV, you can literally see. Uh, multiple streamers doing the same thing uh, and they're and they're literally everywhere in the hot tub. Uh, and this is not just and, and we talked about last week, we talked about um, some of the women streamers and like how they were probably, you know, trying to capitalize on this. Um, but it's not just women. Of course, it's it's all kinds of people like I, I literally went through the category just to see what was out there. And there's all sorts of shapes, sizes, uh, male, female, undecided, whatever. Um, they're all out there. So there is literally a hot tub stream for you or even on the beach or pool or whatever. Uh, and most of these are usually just chatting. Um, so people just talking about a said thing. I did actually see one, though, that was like doing math or drawing uh, on a whiteboard while standing inside a hot tub inside of an apartment or whatever. Um, so they're, they're doing a little bit of different things out there, which most people are trying to, to obviously do that. But it's uh, it is very interesting. Uh, the other thing, too, is the ad revenue we talked about, which was taken away from one of the streamers um, that ads. Those ads have actually Take been given back. So they actually uh, allowed um, her to get those ad the ad revenue back and ads are now rolling again on her on her Twitch page. So that was uh, an interesting turn from Twitch uh, instead of like they kind of like went the embracing route, like we're going to embrace this. And but again, as I said, this is not a long term solution is what Twitch was actually quoted. It actually says uh, this is not intended to be our long term solution to improve brand targeting capabilities and increase personalization in our recommendations. It's uh, it's interesting to me because I really think that with some of the decisions they're making, they're opening up a lot of space for somebody to come in and actually create a new streaming platform specifically for gaming. Because that was supposed yes. to be Twitch. But Twitch has slowly but surely started to move further away from gaming and more to vlogging kind of streams. And if you look the majority of the day, the largest category is just chatting or a variety of well, different categories that don't have anything to do I with mean, video games. All you have to do is point to G4. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry. Gaming is a huge market, but to make it an entertainment market, it's not as big, or at least it doesn't have the audience that they're expecting. Even interactive entertainment which was the, you know, what we kept stressing last week about Twitch. It's just not there for the gaming. In fact, some of the biggest gaming channels out there are the ones that, again, it doesn't focus as much on the game. It 
focus is on the entertainment provided by the person that is there. Yeah. So I, I just, I just do not think based off of, you know, how G4, the rise and fall of G4, you know, gaming and, and, TV and rise gamers, and rise again. It is literally you and right. But, but, and rise again as on streaming platforms. Right. And even then it has an extremely limited audience. And then Twitch born out of Justin TV, which Justin TV was like, anything goes. I remember during Snowpocalypse, I was literally streaming the entire time I was working uh, a video of my cats that were sitting there laying down next to me. Day drinker would have been extremely excited about that. But it started with a la carte, any type of streaming that you want. And they went all gaming. And here we are going right back to right. it again which is be, because the audience isn't there for it to be only games. The audience is there for personalities. Yep. And I mean, heck, that's what we're banking on is that we have personalities here. People come to see Bruno, the salty Canadian, you know, <laughs> the salty Canadian. I like it's, it. it's I'm it's, salty. Now, it, but, <laughs> but that's the thing is it's not necessarily about the games. Even when we talk to our fans, they're like, oh, it's a gaming show. Kind of. I mean, we talk about games, but also we talk about other things it, because it's it's personality driven. Well, yeah. And what's uh, and that's what Twitch is starting to realize. And that's why I don't think that there's going to be any game only competitor <laughs> because how YouTube has evolved and how Twitch has evolved and how even other not necessarily competitors, but other people in the spaces have evolved where they've realized people are coming to see the people and then they want to hear their people talk about certain subjects, but not always about the same. Subject. And, and that was going to say is it's been almost a year today uh, from the announcement that Mixer, which was Microsoft's uh, attempt at doing the gaming Twitch space, like the gaming streaming yep. space, announced that they were shutting their doors. And and that was the whole fiasco. Of didn't even tell their partners that they were doing this. It was just like live stream. The streamers were start, starting to find out that like they're done and uh, immediately flipping on Twitch colors and all that fun stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, we, and, yeah. and that's Microsoft, right? Like this is a company There's, that could compare yeah, Microsoft. to Amazon. There's a bit of a right? difference. Like you got to think Mixer tried to come out during like a major continued rise of Twitch. But if you look at a lot of the channels, if you sit and you watch a lot of these just chatting streamers, you watch a lot of the large gaming streamers, there's a lot of frustration out there of how much people get away with on Twitch now that they mm -hmm. didn't used to get yeah. away with. It's now turned into if you're one of those big personalities, you can do things that you used to not be able to do, say things you used to not be able to say, and then somehow still come back after like a 24 hour ban and keep doing the same things. And yeah. I mean, there's a good chance that if that continues on in the same trend for another couple of years, you could see some people try and go to like some people have already left to YouTube gaming. Like if you look at Among Us is a really well, good example of how many people used to stream on Twitch that you can now only find on YouTube because they didn't want to deal with the problematic culture that was building at Twitch and is continuing to build. Not to say that Twitch's culture is all bad. It's not. I think the majority of it is fine, but I think there's a very vocal portion of it that is very toxic and yet does not get reprimanded yeah. nearly enough. I mean, well, and, and you also you also do have you also do have a history of what you're talking about, too, where. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was E3 because we didn't have an E3 last year. Right? right. So and we're about to hit E3 now. So it's E3. Three years ago that Dr. Disrespect walked around E3 and walked into the restroom streaming live while there's minors in there at urinals. Yeah. And he, and and Twitch is like, well, we're going to ban you for a month and then they're like, but you've been banned now for three days or so. So it's okay. You can come back. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's funny because they know where their money is and that's their money driven. Well, let's yeah. say it's funny that I mean, of course 
this past uh, weekend, actually, me and Phoenix actually talked about this whole subject, which we're kind of talking about now. It's, you know, we need a competitor. Like, there needs to be a competitor because at this point, Twitch is the monopoly, right? They're, they're really, yes, there's Facebook gaming, which is more mostly on mobile gaming. And you have YouTube. Um, and European. And European. And then YouTube kind of does some streaming, but it's still not on the level of, like, on a Twitch, right? So no. we have to have some sort of competitor to come out there. But what they're going to have to do is make it better for the people streaming in the sense of better cuts of money, uh, better ad revenue and all of these things. But at the same time, to get a company to be able to do that, they're going to have to be a serious <laughs> backing type of like money company. So if you guys want to sponsor Where's us, we'll be there. the epic games of streaming? Yeah. <laughs> So if uh, right, the, we will the totally be on your say, site if you want to sponsor the, us, but yeah, make the site. We'll, we'll stream like, there. <laughs> the, the people that are going to come in and say, no, we're not going to take as much of a cut as blah and blah. We're going to give more of a cut to the content creators. Yeah. Literally, the epic game of streaming is what you're saying. And they're going to be. What, in, that's exactly what the, I'm getting at, though, is I think it's possible. I, th yeah. I think it's it's very possible that we see that maybe not in like the next couple of months, because. Now still a bad time to get into it, but the frustration is slowly yeah. building. Yeah, absolutely. Like the more time passes, if you go to like live stream fails, the more intense toxicity you see on there, the more anger and outrage you see about all these events that happen on on like a bi hourly basis of these major streamers doing like really stupid stuff and then not getting banned for it. Yep. And the more and more that that same trend continues, if Twitch doesn't rein it in, which they seem to be like. Right now, they're just trying to be like, OK, everybody has a place. Mm -hmm. And then after we figured out where everybody's place is, we're going to figure out how to, like, control each space. But however they long it takes it. them to get there, they won't do it. They just they want to keep making money. So whatever they well, can do to make the money is what I they're think, going to do. Yeah, my Zeissi was looking at all the new categories that they just came up with. Yeah. And that they recently released. And they're releasing categories faster than they're, like, controlling anything. And And let's be honest the number one thing they need to control is really the chat. Yeah. And that was something that we yeah. talked about. I mean, too. yes, the streamers are doing bad things, but it's the toxicity primarily is in the chat. So that was something that not our chat, our chat's awesome. Yeah, what's what we were talking about too, is that uh, having like this new platform, right? This new company that wants to come out and do this, they need to be able to control their chat in a way too, that would be a, a positivity thing. So for example, um, uh, there's a, you know, obviously a Peloton, right? If you have a Peloton account and you use Peloton, uh, the reason why some people use the app, not necessarily have the bike, but just use the app for fitness is that it's all positive. Like there's, there is a leaderboard, but you can shut that off. And then the only thing you can do to interact with people is like high five them. And, and literally, uh, you know, just that's it. And then, you know, we can even find people who are like high fiving a little too much, which almost could be like, you know, people trolling at this point, but that's literally it. Right. You can literally Every just time they pass yeah. you, they give you a high so, five, but that's, you know, but it, that's something that where it could be trolling. It could be incentive. Yeah. You know, you don't know. So that's something they could enter like kind of like inner work into this new platform is that, you know, maybe you don't have a free open chat where you can just type a bunch of things, but maybe you have certain emotes. <laughs> like you look at games like. Um, like Hearthstone and things where you have certain quotes like uh, emotes that you can actually use. And that's basically it. So it's like you can kind of, you know, you can still kind of give your reaction, your emotion of what you feel. But at the same time, it's not like this really bad thing that you have to have a moderator. Make sure that people aren't saying some really derogative or just really bad things. So, I mean, I'm with you. I think there needs well, to be a competition. Well, that's the problem, too, is because moderators are all it, it's all community based. It's all volunteer. It's it's. It's it's not anything done by Twitch. Uh, I I mean we we could have a hundred trolls that decide to come in here and try to destroy us. Yeah. Now, fortunately, we have a couple of good people, <laughs> and, a, and more than a couple, a couple of, of good uh, people. We got more than a couple of good people in our chat that would probably step up, and if we made a moderators, would just bring the ban hammer down on people. But that's not everybody's stream, yeah. and especially small streamers like us. That's extremely difficult thing if you have a hundred or a thousand people that decide to come in and just destroy you. It's I mean, it, it's rough. And Twitch, as much as they have like, I'm even like got the new moderator tool new to me, <laughs> new moderator view up, and it's already got problems where it's got the chat going, but users in chat is refreshed and it doesn't even show me the users. So 
Yeah, it's I mean it's already got problems and the, their automated tools are just not mature. Yeah. The uh Bruno would probably say shit or garbage. So the uh the good news um <laughs> well not necessarily good news. One of the good things that Twitch did announce recently is that uh they actually added 350 plus uh new tags. So what a tag is, is basically when you go to stream, uh, there are certain tags you can actually add to the category or to the gaming that you're playing uh, to indicate a little more specific uh, areas that you're doing. So if you're playing like a uh, I believe this one was like a one coin uh, game or one coin run or something is what I said. And it basically says like um, it's uh, one credit clear for streams with emphasis on com uh, completing a coin op arcade game without using any continues. Like you can add these tags to different things. Now, not necessarily that one's new, um, but one of the some of the new ones they talked about was try to um, engage the community that has been seeing a lot of the hate and a lot of the, the issues lately, which is, you know, gender roles, uh, sexual orientation, race um, and a bunch of other things. Uh, so um, they've added uh, transgender, black, disabled, veteran, uh, VTuber. There was one we saw today was uh, intersex was one of those uh, LGTB, LG, LGT, was it? Oh, my God. I can't, LGBTQIA plus. Uh, is also now a yes. tag. So there's there's tags uh, literally for a lot of things now, as opposed to before there wasn't. Brick builder tag. There is a brick builder tag. I pointed that out to uh, to Phoenix earlier. I'm not saying it's the most important. Yeah, I'm just saying that it is relevant to me is all. But yeah, there's a there's a whole list of these uh, and you can go. We'll put the, the link in the in the description for the video on YouTube. But uh, it's just twitch TV uh, slash directory slash all slash tags. And then you can see a list of all the tags that are there. Uh, some of these are automatic. Uh, some of these are basically by the category. And some of these are when you're streaming. And they have the little indicator of when that is. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of different ones. I mean, literally based on the type of uh, like nationality you come from, you can do that. Uh, if you have some sort of disability or anything like that, there's tags for that. Uh, it's just it's uh, it's really neat to see that they're at least trying to um, at least get people that are of a certain type together and be able to unify themselves amongst other people. So uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Until they try to control the space, but I, no, I shouldn't say down or like that. It is very cool. They need these categories and it is continued steps away from them being a game streaming service. But I think, like I said, they need to, it's, they need to diversify and, embracing some of this diversification is going to be really cool. Yeah. I think adding the new tags also takes some of the steam away from the very angry other side where they're like, like right now everybody's been like hot tub stream shouldn't be a thing, but it's harder to argue that they shouldn't be a thing. And those people should be banned when those when, people are streaming under the category hot yep. tubs. Like, like it's like, Oh, well now Twitch says that I'm okay. So you can stop, stop memeing me on your stream now and getting your, your 10,000 person chat to come in here and shit on me, which inevitably turns into them donating tons of money <laughs> is usually how it goes. Yeah. Go trash this yeah, streamer for much. hot tub streaming. No, no, no. Don't donate to them. You're supposed to trash them. It's like, sorry, we're here now. This is, this is how it goes. I don't right? understand. This, is, this is what we do. We, we, we dump bits wherever we are. Somebody needs to come here and dump bits on us or something like Whoa, it's icy. that work sounds, on, work, make sure, make sure you have the, uh, Make sure you have the animation for that. That sounds risque. <laughs> Come in here, dump and deliver me. <laughs> just saying. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, interesting. I'm just saying, if you only got two 20s, you're not making it rain. It's true. <laughs> well, to try to wrap this up before we go to break, and this won't be very long, but E3 is around the corner. In fact, we will have episode 52. We'll have our last one for completing a year right before E3 starts. So June 10th will be our 50 52nd out uh, episode. And June 12th is when E3 will start going all the way through June 15th. So our 53rd episode, first one of the second year, we will be talking about how E3 was. Since it's arriving, they're going to have an E3 app, which we talked about. It was a one minute story last week. Uh, which <laughs> was about apropos. 
that it only really deserved a one minute story. And there's not much more information on it. Uh, you will be able to sign up for E3 starting June 3rd. Their app is going to be available, which gives you more access to E3 is what they're saying. Uh, virtual booths, hosted events. Uh, you'll be able to do avatar customization and set up a profile. Now that I think is kind of cool. That's one of the things that when we had PAX Online last Super year, cool. and PAX Online's coming back, was really cool on their Discord server. They didn't have an app. They had the Discord server. And, you know, you had an avatar. You could get emotes. You could... There was a lot of things that with participation, uh, you could gain things. So I think they're trying a little bit of that. I'm not so sure about the app thing because in all reality, if I want to attend E3, it's on my 1440p monitor so that I, I don't want... I, I'm not trying to gatekeep. Everybody should mm, attend it the way they want. I don't to. know. That's how people gatekeep. And they usually say that. First off, I'm not trying to gatekeep, and they usually gatekeep. But you got Mike. a point there. You got a point there. <laughs> the That's usually me. I'm usually majority, the person that does this. The vast majority of people who interact with things like this, and even games, if you look worldwide, is gonna be through phones. Period. The whole concept of having a dedicated computer and monitor. It's, I'm not saying it's a U.S. only thing, but what I'm saying is when you look outside the U.S., PUBG, even, even Fortnite's going this way, and mobile gaming on the phones is massive. So I get it. Having a phone app for attending E3, it's going to be big. Personally, I would like to see it, you know, my trailers and stuff like that or things that are exciting that are coming up on as much resolution as I can because I want to see it. Uh, but that is only me. And I'm not going to I'm not going to shame anyone for the way they want to see E3. So, yes, the app should exist. As a gateway, as an easy way to consume or, you know, get your information from E3. I'm just hoping that they have additional stuff on the Web as well, or at least have a PC version of the app. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I mean, the whole thing is they need to obviously learn um, from last year, like everyone needs to learn, like even if it's not necessarily saying PAX did the best job, they've been doing this for a while. But like if they could at least look yeah. at all of the, the documentation from last year, the video footage of what people did and what worked and use that this year, like all of these cons will be like 100 percent better if they can just at least add that little factor of the online presence to it and make it worthwhile. Not just like, OK, you have a website. Great. That's really great. Yeah. Also with E3, uh, they did announce that they've added 15 more companies. And I think they're feeling like obligated that they've got to announce this because major companies had. Let's use the very poor verbiage of pulled out like Sony and. There's a couple others, I think what Konami said, they're not going to be there. But again, that's not a shocker. When's the last time Konami's actually made a game? They're in the health club business right now and, and gambling. But they did know they did mention and This is interesting because they're not necessarily mentioning big developers all that much. Razor. Sure. So you got some hardware in there and, and yep. Yeah, well, I mean, I can put my hand on Razor myself. We're just we're Whoa. showing off razor things. Oh my goodness, guys! There we go, everybody. Yeah. Everybody on the razor. Better hold club. up yeah. your razor, razor stuff. mouse club. Yeah, and it's that's not even plugged in. That's that's a spare. <laughs> oh, dude, that was he's just kidding. He's he's got his stuff plugged in. He's like, oh yeah, check this out. It's not even plugged in. Yeah, well, it's because I use my Logitech. <laughs> yeah, he uses Superior. a real mouse. Yeah. 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 I, hear <laughs> I bought yeah, this well, razor because I mean, it was again, on discount. Hey, it's this is a problem with wow. left-handed people. <laughs> You can't find a good no. left-handed mouse. Mm. So like I had to That's get true. This one is I uh, I think almost yeah. neutral for left-handed, so it's not I do as feel terrible. like like if, if we're going to keyboards, Corsair is superior for sure. And then I think Logitech mice are, are generally a lot a lot better. I mean I use I actually have a HyperX keyboard, which I haven't had any complaints with. It was actually supposed to be less noise, which <laughs> it still kind of almost resembles a mechanical keyboard, but um it is quieter. 
Well, and interestingly enough, Corsair, Logitech, Hyper, none of those are actually in this list. Razor's one of the few hardware yep. ones. Uh, in television. What? In television. What? Okay. <laughs> yes, in television. Wow. That's what they announced as one of the companies. I'm glad. In television. I, have, I may have to attend now. Uh, well, I mean, Intellivision has like a holding company that held the rights to Intellivision, created a division that they were going to bring back like when the classic consoles were going nuts uh, and still kind of are. I mean, the classic NES and the classic SNES, we have members of the chat that have some of those that may have gotten them through a particular TT. Not to give any advertising to anything. But well, uh, Intellivision was making its own type of classic console as well. Uh, you, I, I might be saying this wrong, but uh, Eureka, Y-O-O-R-E-K-A. So Eureka Studio, Taste Makers. So I just want to be clear that the fourth company that E3 mentions is being joined is called Taste Makers. Yeah. NetEase. 24 Entertainment, Norton Gaming, because Norton is known for gaming. Uh, Guile Kit, SK Telecom, six independent game developers who have also been added to the list of participants, including uh, uh, Burgos Games, Dream Tech, Ghost Street Games, Hooded Horse, Sixth Hammer, and New Blood Interactive, according to this GameSpot article. So, to <laughs> be clear... Uh, as somebody said, cybersecurity is not a game. And yet, and apparently, Norton Gaming seems to think it is. Apparently, downloading so a car is still bad. I kind of agree with chat. Was that? So downloading a car is still apparently illegal. I don't know why. Yeah, well, yeah. But, you know, I agree with chat. Uh, cybersecurity is not a game. And yet, they think it's... So, that's kind of interesting that this is the announcement that E3 is making essentially two weekends before they start. That's that's kind of telling of a couple of things. Yeah, there's still going to be the big game, big name games there. The big name companies are going to be there. Sure. But the fact that they felt that they wanted to announce tastemakers I, you know, I'm going to look up tastemakers now. I mean, maybe I'm being too rough on you have to give. I should you have go to give what you can get. I mean, you know what I mean? That's that's what they got. Wow. That's what they're getting. I, well, I mean, I mean, I should look them up. I like may, maybe they're making something that I would be interested in. I don't know. It's going to be like uh, frozen it, bananas or something. Um, arcade Seems, machines. It looks like. I mean, the number one thing that comes up is videos that look like their recipe videos and something it's literally no, there's, there's something called tastemakers llc that's uh, arcade machine ah uh, gotcha yeah arcade one up tastemakers yep yeah. no i see that now <laughs> ninja turtles so they're making the the home like mini arcade games it's interesting Fair of enough. all those 15 that you mentioned the biggest one out of all of them is netease no, it's got to be in television, of course. If this was 1980, NetEase is, maybe. NetEase is the uh, the only company in Asia that is behind Tencent and size, or like the the closest company behind Tencent and size for online gaming. Fair mm. enough. Hmm. Interesting. So, I don't know. I'm I am excited to see E3 this year but not for the same reasons that I've been excited in the past. No I, I am, I am halfway between how are they going to make this work and what kind of car wreck is this going to be? So BlizzCon was canceled, right? Uh, it was online. Okay. Cause like, I wonder if, if there's going to be Diablo immortal news at E3 since NetEase is going to be there. I mean, it's I mean, made I, I in think we're more likely to, is, so I think we're, well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. The mobile game. Yeah. Like yeah, they're, they're you have a making phone, right? the game. So <laughs> you guys all have phones, don't you? Oh man. That fiasco. I forgot about that. 
Uh, chat did mention uh, EA is also not going to be there. Uh, they mentioned Sony, but they apparently somebody didn't asked if Bethesda Sony will be there. be there. I don't um, think Bethesda will be there. They will not. They're working yeah. on uh, Fallout 89. Yeah. So yeah, as far as I know, break. like well, I think Bethesda wouldn't know, be there because they had no their own. Microsoft there. No. Yeah. Well, no... Xbox is there. Actually, oh, hold on. Uh, okay. Xbox is there, so the, you know we may very okay. well actually hear about Bethesda. We talked about because I said you know because they usually have Bethesda's own release thing um, that they the, do, but they wouldn't now. But now they wouldn't, because... or would they, or would Microsoft still let them have their own Bethesda showcase because of all the games? Nah, I think I think they drag them in with it. Oh well, apparently Chad they, has uh, they would probably that for us. just when they do their montage of video games that are going to be like you know coming out in the next because it's never the next year; it's like the next eighteen months to two years. I'm sure they'll just include all their studios. I mean, it only makes sense. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious whether it's going to be car wreck or just slightly entertaining. My money's on car wreck. And with that, <laughs> we're going to take a few minutes here. Uh, listen to a word from me uh, about our sponsor. And we're back. <laughs> this is always so awkward. I love it. It's a uh, it's great. And it wasn't time. four minutes. It was almost four minutes. We, it was, I was only trying to get, awkward because you said it was awkward. I was, was trying to get back then. every time. And every time I try to get back from the commercial, like I get stuck in this four minute loop of Phoenix talking about some other thing and then it's going, wait, you're minutes. counting down. And I'm like, yeah, I've been counting down to like come back. Anyway, it's just this is what we've been playing this week. <laughs> so we uh, we actually did game of the moment this week uh, resumed as normal. Uh, I actually hosted this week, played a game called Man Eater. And yes, this is uh, not uh, the song Man Eater, but actually a game. And uh, the game is about a protagonist that lives in the ocean and is out to uh, create uh, lots of pools of blood and destroy humans. And uh, yeah, you're basically a shark. Uh, so if you liked the movie Jaws, but were terrified of the shark, well, you get to be the shark in this game. Uh, you get to eat sea creatures, sea monsters, fight alligators, uh, humans. Uh, there's also uh, there even like there's hunters that are out there that are trying to like by name if they have like a whole group of all these different hunters that are out there to get you and uh, you can like battle them by jumping through the air and like like doing these crazy tactical moves to try to like pick them off the the ski jets and stuff they're on. So uh, it was it was a pretty entertaining game. I started off, um, you know, kind of thinking this was going to be more of a joke game because it just looked funny. Uh, and then by the end of the stream, I was actually really enjoying it. Like I was actually getting into it. It almost reminded me of combat from like Batman Arkham Asylum, uh, which was kind of interesting because it's just, like completely not the same game at all. Like this is way different, um, but I definitely enjoyed it. It was I, actually the really sonar. Neat. The sonar wasn't quite the detective vision yeah. of Batman, but there was some similarities. Yeah, it was it was an interesting game. Um, definitely end game for this. We'll have to go back and play it again or I'll play it again later once I progress a little further. Uh, but you can uh, there's a whole evolution path with it, too, where you can actually evolve your character by going to a certain place and uh, which I had to figure out after I already went there. Yeah, and you guys unfortunately, our well. host decided to start <laughs> somewhere near the beginning of the game, so we didn't get to see as much people murdering as we had all hoped. But well, I, I also I was greatly amused by the fact that this game literally gated your progression like you had to progress and evolve to an old enough shark to get through an iron gate to get to the next area, which you would tail whip in order to break it down to go through to the next area, which was also funny. But yeah, it's it was an interesting game. And then the, some of the evolve um, parts that you can evolve is like getting like body armor or like better teeth with like shocking, like a shocking uh, teeth grip or whatever. Bioelectric. Um, and then one of the ones that I got was the tiger skin. So you actually got a, nom, a, a nom, nice nom, nom, skin nom. Uh, to just have like a tiger shark skin, with like red stripes. So um, there was actually some pretty cool stuff with this game. Again, I'll have to go back and play it uh, at a later time where I have all the cool perks to it just so we can see how ridiculous this game can get. Um, but it was pretty fun. Uh, it is currently free on Xbox Game Pass, uh, and you can also pick it up on Steam. It's on sale right now, 33% off uh, for, I think it's thirty five ninety nine. dollars uh, I think full price is like 40 bucks, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's out I'll, there. Check I, it out. I'll absolutely say this is one that you absolutely need to come back later to do a another feature on 
and show what it looks like later in the game. Yeah, definitely a survival open world game and you're literally surviving because you're a shark. Um, so there is that. The uh, the game of the moment video will be published here soon. Uh, so that should be on our page and you can check out the full gameplay uh, of our playthrough or my playthrough uh, from Tuesday. So you can check it out. The um, limited beginning play <laughs> gameplay. Yes, Friday at noon. Part one, part one. So the other game, uh, I'm gonna briefly, label it that now. Uh, briefly, I want to just be obligated. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, I briefly want to talk about this, like literally just say that I did. But I, I have been playing uh, Dorf Romantic, uh, the game that Phoenix played last week for uh, Game of the Moment. I did check it out. It wasn't a streaming game for me. Didn't enjoy the, watching the stream, but playing it is actually pretty interesting, uh, entertaining. Yeah. And uh, I'd say check it that's, out. That's one thing we got to work on, though, because when we're doing that, we're not streaming. We're demonstrating for people. We're not trying to stream a game at that point in time. I mean, we're still streaming. It's, it. Yeah, but it's got to keep my attention. We're, we're demonstrating the gameplay so people understand what the game is about. We're not saying it's a streaming game. No, I, I get that. But we were streaming it. So uh, anyway, the game's still $9.99 uh, on Steam. $9.99. But yeah, that's still on there. Um, but the last bucks. game that I want to talk about that I did play uh released i think it was yesterday um but it's knockout city and knockout city we talked about uh earlier uh, a few episodes ago uh, about a dodgeball game that was coming out with the new ai that was like the referees were going to be able to predict where you're throwing the ball and all that stuff uh but i actually got to play it last night and i will say i'm slightly addicted to it because like it is literally dodgeball i like, it's there's not there's not a whole lot of uh crazy added things to this game. I think Bruno's going to love it actually. Um, wait when he starts playing it, but it's a, it's a, it's a dodgeball game. You can throw the ball, you can catch the ball. It, uh, auto targets. Uh, so far people are playing it right now. Uh, it auto targets your enemies. So you don't have to like actually focus on aiming, but more of throwing and catching. So if someone throws a ball at you, you can literally catch the ball if you have the right timing and then throw it right back. And the idea is, uh, you have like two hit points, um, the first one is like a warning. The second one knocks you out, which the enemy would get the point at that point. Uh, it's the first to 10 is the typical game mode you start with. And uh, you have a team of three, three B three, and you all try to like go after each other and try to, to like knock the team out so you can get points to, to end up winning. Yeah. And I like that the premise is so simple to start with, but then they put so many modifiers and add on ins there. You can roll yourself up in a ball and you can like spam an emote that's like Pick me up, pick me up, throw me, throw me, throw me. And you can pick up a character that's rolled in a ball and thrown at someone. And instead of the normal one tick down on their health, it hits them for a complete knockout. Uh, that's really cool. Some of the balls are modifiers. Uh, Zysia, you were telling me about like a lunar ball. Yeah, so there's a moon like ball. Uh, the moon ball, basically, the person who picks it up uh, has like the ability to like almost like bullet time, like slow down for them. Like they can jump really far, like it's no gravity. Um, but when you hit somebody with that one, they go shooting off like it says to the moon because they get like literally launched as far as they can. Uh, there's also a multi ball. There's one that's like a, a timed grenade. Uh, as soon as you pick it up, it starts ticking down and it just explodes. Yeah, my favorite uh, there is was the cage ball. The cage ball was interesting. Have you already played this? Yeah. Oh, you have. You like it, don't you? It's OK. So far, like I played it. it for a small amount yesterday. You're going to play it more and you're going to like it. <clears throat> you, yeah, totally. Anyway, uh, I skipped a tutorial. so like. It was yeah. a weird crash course. It it did. I did the same thing. I actually went back and played the tutorial, though. Um, if you do that, you'll get some extra bonus items um, right off the rip from doing that, like some XP and stuff. But mm. um, and the other thing, part of this game, yeah, too, that's... is uh, the clothes like you get like perks and uh, things you can add to your character, like uh, inventory stuff, like, you know, glasses or hair and different things like that. That's one of the interesting things I found out about this game was that it did have all the trappings of a free to play game where they had cosmetics that you can get cosmetics and show your for. individuality and all that stuff. But I mean, it is free right now. It's got like a 10 day window that's free, not just on Game Pass, not just on EA Play. Like you can go and get this game now free. I'm so seeing too. again, for those of you that do watch our YouTube video or Twitch, you should be subscribing and you should get those alerts because sometimes we're talking about stuff that's happening right now and it's it's already in the middle of the 10 days, so it's not like it's got 10 days left. But the, but you're going to have to 
if you don't have these services, you're going to have to buy this game. And while it's got free to play trappings in it, uh, it's it's actually a pay game, which is kind of odd in some of this. But for that matter, it it looks really awesome. And one of the things I thought about it, too, is it's kind of doing for dodgeball. What Rocket League did for soccer. And. I was going to say this anyway, it's interesting that chat actually just said similar, the same thing. Uh, they said it's going to be like Rocket League, but I think that only took off because uh, it debuted on the PS. Um, PS Plus, it came free uh, in 2015. So again, right. here I am, a guy who's played Rocket League way too much time of his life uh, since 2015 when it was released. No. I am also into this game. It's really kind of liking the same avenue of the things that I enjoy, uh, which is quick paced like gameplay. That's a sport like that's kind of what I'm into. And, you're, and there's all these different abilities of jumping and gliding and throwing. And so it kind of did give me that same feeling. And uh, I definitely do enjoy that, even though some people in chat don't agree with me. Uh, yeah, the game's awesome. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what you say. Anyway. Knockout City. Check it out now while it's still free. Uh, Xbox Game Pass, I believe, is going to keep it because it's free on EA Play. Uh, and I believe it was going to do that anyway at launch. I think we covered that before. So you do have it. Um, so that's uh, that is something you'll be able to continue, I believe, after this um, 10 day grace period. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Very cool game. Uh, that is what I've actually been playing this week. What do you guys have? <clears throat> um, well, I play a little bit of Knockout City, but the primary game that I played this week was uh Biomutant. Um, Biomutant's a... It's an open world... RPG game with... Uh, an interesting combat system that has elements from, like, everything, really. It's got guns, it's got ninja-esque weapons, it's got warrior weapons, like big swords, it's got spears, it's got magic, it's got a rocket gauntlet, it's like Ratchet & Clank meets, rocket like... Gun. Assassin's Creed meets some kind of shooter meets I don't know like a little bit of Steam everything. Steampunk. Yeah. Steampunk all over the place. He's just like post apocalyptic mutated rodent creatures. Is this Craftopia again? Is that what we're talking about? No. Oh, no. <laughs> um I don't know. I don't know what I think about it yet. Like I enjoy the combat. I enjoy the world. I don't mind the story, but the story is just so hard to follow. Not because it's hard to follow which is weird to say, but because it's all the NPCs talk kind of like Animal Crossing NPCs. Oh, so they just God. make gibberish I'm sounds. I'm out. Um, mm. And then there's just a narrator that kind of like kind of like describes to you what they're saying. So like like you'll hear like the like they'll just say a bunch of gibberish and he'll be like, yes, like Sir No Legs or whatever <laughs> says that like he is pleased with the fact that a Ronin from across the wall has shown up and you're like, yeah, all right, shut up, dude. I'm not listening to this. And you just end up skipping through all of it because it just you just like you kind of follow the cutscenes, but you don't follow the entire story unless I guess you're very disciplined. So like the game's not doing great in terms of reviews. Like I, I feel like everybody thought it was gonna be like a knockout game. It's made by like a 40 person dev team. It looks absolutely stunning in all the previews. But then when you get into it, it's got some clunky systems to it and just like it misses the mark on a lot of things. Very ambitious. Definitely. They didn't have the manpower to like. Very anticipated. Yeah. Like every single packs where I saw this at, which was multiples of them, they had lines around the booth for people wanting to play Biomutant. And, and this is from a, not, this is from a publisher. You know, the studio makes the game. The publisher publishes a lot of games from multiple <laughs> studios. Right. Uh -huh. This is from a publisher that had a lot of other games in their booth. And it was always, always Biomute that had the line and everybody was wanting to play that. Yeah. And it looked fantastic at the time, but uh, I, I, I mm, the voice thing that kind of puts me off a little <laughs> the, bit. Um, the yeah, average same. review right now across the board is like a six out of 10. And usually I disagree so much with reviewers. Like, I think that they're, they're generally, they just miss the mark or they like, these are, completely trash something because they didn't get paid to say good things about it or they say way better things about it than they should because they got paid to say good things about it. 
And this one got like a pretty much like a six out of ten everywhere you look. And I think that's exactly where it's landed, in my opinion. It's like it's so far like a six out of ten. I don't know if like the story will pick up later and I'll be interested in it, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the end of this one. I'm not sure that my stupid attention span can keep me even yeah. on this game. It's kind of like I find myself being like, oh, I could play it more. Or I could go and play like Diablo 3 a little bit or play some Final Fantasy 14 or anything else, really. So um, that's or... interesting because you're probably one of the the only ones out of our group that actually will play games until like <laughs> you get to the end. Because like you usually you tend to do that. So like yeah. that's impressive that you're saying that you probably won't finish this. I mean, um, when you think yeah. about it, like Outriders, Outriders was a mess. F functionally, Outriders yeah. was abysmal in terms of like comparison to Biomutant. But even Outriders managed to keep me all the way through to the end of the story and into like 40 hours of post-game content. And then they deleted all of my characters and they oh, failed boy. to reimburse me correctly, wiped my stash, deleted my achievements, and I still went back and played longer. And this game hasn't done anything to me. Functionally, it's better, but I still can't get myself into it as much. Just, I, I don't know. It just it, it misses the mark on what they were it's trying to do. something. I hope they release some patches, well, they update some things, make things more streamlined, and release some more DLC. And I feel like it could follow in the same vein as a game called Outward, which released with very similar issues. Small dev team, anticipated game, missed the mark initially, but all of the effort was there. You could tell that they had tried to craft a big world, and then they continued to support it, and it became something better. Um, so hopefully that's how it goes. Uh, one cool. thing I want to know: single player game. Where can we find it? Uh, you can find it everywhere. Um, PlayStation, <laughs> Xbox, Steam <laughs> for sixty dollars. How much? Sixty dollars. There we go. Uh, one thing I want to note on Knockout City. Uh, yeah, it released mm -hmm. on the 21st of May. So it's been out for now today, seven or seven days. Um, but playing it last night, I didn't run into any network or any sort of like server issues. I will say everything was pretty flawless from start to finish. And uh, that was kind of neat to see that, like, I just jumped into a new game and it was just working like people were online. I was able to, you know, <laughs> connect with people and it just worked. So I didn't run into any bugs. Cool. You got anything, Brian? No, it's fine. Brian is our content creator. He's the one who's doing all the video editing and stuff. So they're, they're, he's he's constantly playing, but he's playing Adobe Premiere um, editing and stuff. Yeah, the so. time I spend playing video games is like half of the time that he spends creating content. And I play a lot of video games, so that should give you an indication of how much yeah. time he spends creating content. Yeah. I did open some Looney Tunes blind bags, though. Oh, nice. And so. you have a video on that, right? Yeah, that's on my YouTube channel. Cool. Check it out. Check it out. Click the little button. You'll add one or something. You can click it over there. <laughs> anyway. Well, cool. That is uh, that's what we've been playing this week. And uh, now it's time for the short attention news. All right. Well, let's uh, get right into it. I was just talking about games that had rough starts. And uh, now our story comes from none other than the ultimate rough start of a game, No Man's Sky, um, who, I mean, obviously Hello Games has brought that game a, a heck of a long way. Um, and in their event, uh, to coincide with EA's remake of all the Mass Effect series, there was a special event going on in No Man's Sky, and many players were treated to the appearance of the SSV Normandy. From Mass Effect. It is now a frigate ship that you can actually get in the game and add it to your fleet. You can you can get the Mass Effect signature ship in No Man's Sky. That's that's pretty damn wicked. Like yeah, the, pretty cool. the cross promotional to make that happen is insane. Wild. So also in terrible news, uh, Walmart decided to do another restock of the PS5. And, uh, you know, they were actually one of the known people that you could potentially get a PS5 from. Uh, so they put a new restock up. There was a $500 for the regular standard, the disc edition, and there was the $400 all digital PS5 as well. Um, these obviously sold out in record time because why not? People are still trying to get a hold of these things, except what happened was 
half of the people that ordered the 500 edition, $500 edition, either didn't see it in their cart, completely just didn't exist, or it showed up as a third party seller who was selling the PS5 for $1,100. So, of course, people on the Internet went wild and they're all posting pictures of like literally their cart showing like nice try. Like you tried to get me to spend this money on this. Uh, and eventually, like nobody got any of the PS5s. And uh, so Walmart really just dropped the ball on this one. Whatever they did uh, was not the way to go about it this time. Well, near and dear to my heart is the fact that. Time Splitters was a fun game back in the day, fun and multiplayer. OK, campaign with an interesting story that uh, does not translate well to the current day, let me tell you. Um, but. That IP has been moved from company to company, to company and lost and found and lost and found. And apparently Deep Silver has actually revived some of the members of the original team, including the studio founders, Steve Ellis and David Doak. And they're actually going to make time splitters again. Nice. They have only said they've released almost no details. They've only said we're going to make it and we're hiring people up to make it, which is more than anything that they've said in the last couple of years. I'm going to really be looking for that. I don't know if it's going to be time splitters four or if they're going to, if they're smart, they'll probably remake some of the time splitters and then also make the next time splitters, but time will tell. And we're going to see on that. Yep. So if you're a fan of the Tony Hawk series, uh, there is a band that you're probably familiar with CKY, or if you used to watch the Jackass series, uh, Bam Margera, he's one of the, the people that were kind of behind that. And uh, it's his it's his uh, brother's band, essentially. Um, but CKY was or Bam Margera was actually on a podcast called Behind Closed Doors. Uh, and they were talking about different things about the past and all this other fun stuff. And uh, what he mentioned was that uh, he said uh, Margera, Margera tells the interviewers that he believes that they'll be on the new one coming out too, talking about Tony Hawk. And uh, but there's not been a new Tony Hawk announced yet. So that was the interesting part about this. Uh, they did remaster one and two uh, for the PS5 that you can play. So you can go back and play like the old school uh, Tony Hawk one and two. Um, but there hasn't been any any mention or anything that's in the works for a new Tony Hawk. So we don't know if this was a oops, I told it early or if this was more of a I just made a mistake and maybe we're talking about something different, but we'll have to follow that one. Yeah, some of the rumors around that is because there's some of their songs were on Tony Hawk three. And because of the conversation that was going on at the time that it could have been interpreted that they were like, you know, oh, our song was to in Tony Hawk three and it's going to be in the new one, too. Well, since they like you said, they just remade Tony Hawk one and two. It could be that they're remaking Tony Hawk three and maybe even Tony Hawk four. So right. or it could be a completely new game whatsoever. No one knows. Cool. Um, some interesting news. Uh, the Switch may have a competitor on the horizon in the handheld scene. Uh, Valve is potentially working on a handheld Steam console called Steam Pal, or its current code name is Neptune. Um, people found data for um, references of controller bindings, UI strings, um, menu system settings for airplane mode, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and power menus. So this might, might very well be what um gabe newell alluded to earlier this year right so that'll be interesting it's funny because i heard similar things right before you know like they had their steam console and everybody thought they were going to make their own console and then like no 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 we're we're making a platform where other people can make consoles with this os and platform yeah so i'm kind of skeptical on that one we'll see so recently uh, we talked about how uh, the Steam page now has a PlayStation store, uh, PlayStation Steam page, and uh, some new documentation has been released, uh, kind of uh, not necessarily secretive. It's a it's a you can go to Sony dot com and find this PDF that's listed through a bunch of different areas. Uh, but it's usually it's like a huge uh, like publicity uh, PDF that talks about 
all of the sales and numbers of the company and all of these things that they're going to be doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then one of the pages is new growth vectors and it says PlayStation Studios. It says off console, it says PC, uh, it has Horizon Zero Dawn. It says more PC release plan, Days Gone, which we've already known about. Also listed Uncharted 4. So they have already secretly kind of announced that Uncharted 4 will be coming to PC as well. Um, this thing does have a lot of information in it. They talk about uh, the new VR handhead, uh, handhelds uh, that we would saw initially that was like rumored to be. Uh, we see a bunch of different things about uh, moving into the China market uh, and doing all kinds of different launches there. And then uh, it's basically their whole like next year thing. So it's pretty neat. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, we'll probably put a link or something for that as well. For those of you that know about Warhammer and Warhammer 40K, which is the far sci-fi version of Warhammer, uh, you'll know that Warhammer is the original IP that Blizzard ripped off to make Warcraft. But of course, they did successful in Warcraft. And you will also know that Warhammer somehow licensed the ever-loving bejesus out of their games, where in a given year, about 30,000 Warhammer games are released. They want to capitalize on this, and apparently they are going to release a Warhammer streaming channel. They have 11 shows that are currently in development for War but that are covering between Warhammer and Warhammer 40K. Uh, Black Talon, Iron Thin, Alter Wrath, High Luris, I might be saying that wrong, Broken Lance, Interrogator, The Expedite, along with others. Check out the Kotaku article for that. Uh, it's a good mix of 2D, 3D, uh, realistic art styles, very like Transformer type art styles, for lack of a better term. They got a sizzle reel that you can check out. I don't know if they're going to have enough content for a Disney Plus type streaming channel. But it'll still be interesting and we'll see. All right. Um, this is going to be some more sad news. Um, it's with re reference to Borderlands 3, something that a lot of people have requested, including myself, um, is crossplay. <sighs> for PC and PlayStation and Xbox, and it seemed like we were getting close. However, uh, recently it was announced by the Gearbox CEO that in order for certification for the new crossplay supported version to go through, they have to scrap crossplay for PlayStation. Um, it's not clear whether the issue came from 2K side um, as the publisher or if it came from um, Sony side. Um, though Sony does force people to pay them money in order to allow for crossplay, um, unlike Xbox for the most part. So it, you know, it could very well be that 2K was just like, we're not paying for this and scrapped it uh, entirely. Hopefully, though, the crossplay still releases for the consoles that are accepting of it and we'll go for there. I think it's interesting that some of the information actually came out from the Epic versus Apple yeah. lawsuit that Sony absolutely did not want crossplay until they said, okay, well, Epic, you pay for it. And, and it had a formula too. They had a formula of like, okay, so based on the number of people that are playing on our platform versus other platforms and that percentage, and then how much they're purchasing DLC and other things on our platform versus their platform comes up with an amount of money that Epic has to pay Sony. So Sad to say, I can't say I'm shocked by that news. Another thing I'm not shocked about is uh, you like that segue better. Uh, Fall Guys. Much better. They obviously like to have new skins because that's what they do. It's all about the little jelly bean guys like making new skins. Um, so here's some news for you guys because you probably didn't know that. Um, but there is now a free to play Battle Royale Super Bomberman R online. That's a real game that apparently got released. Uh, and inside that game, you can play as one of the Fall Guys characters. You can actually skin your character in that as a Bomberman that looks like a Fall Guy character. 
Uh, along with that, obviously, Fall Guys has taken in some of the Bomberman skins as well. So you can play as Bomberman inside Fall Guys as well. Um, there is uh, so the skins available in the shop. Uh, it's ten crowns, uh, so you can uh, you can win ten matches and then you know have enough to pay for this, uh, or just do your normal progression, whatever. Um, but the point is, it's the Bean Bomber, so uh, you can check it out. And as a side note, you can get on the Epic Game Store if you don't already have it until June third. Fall Guys is free on Epic Game Store. Oh, cool. So uh, we don't have any emails this week, but if you want to email us, goa at sasgaming.com. We'll read it out loud. We can uh, talk about it. Uh, send us what you're doing. Send us, you know, your hobby, whatever. Just send it in. We'll, we'll see it. Uh, un- that's about it. So that's what got our attention this week. It is. That's what got our attention this week. Uh, and if you want to uh, see, if you're listening to this uh, right now via Spotify or podcast, wherever site you're on, uh, you can always watch this live on Twitch on Thursday nights at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, typically. Uh, and then we also take this video footage. We put it up online onto our YouTube account as well. The other thing to mention is if you want to help support content like this for us, like if you want to do more than just watch our and listen to us and you really just want to throw money at us or for whatever reason, that'd be whatever uh you can sign up for our patreon we do have a patreon account patreon.com slash sas gaming uh and you can find all this information on our website which is sas gaming.com uh, this is where you can find all the links for our socials and all the, the the fun things that we do um so check it out uh if you enjoy it if uh and if you do subscribe and like all the stuff um and if you like personally want to hear more about me I don't know why, uh, but you can find me on Twitch, uh, just XYCIA. On Instagram, it's XYCIA Gaming. Also on Twitter, it's uh, XYCIA Gaming as well. Brian? Uh, yeah, you can find me at Phoenix Nova, P H O E N N I X. Nova. <laughs> Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> that was a loaded But, uh, you know, throw in the underscore for the appropriate ones. Go to SAS Gaming, you'll find the, the links. Uh, I'm getting there. I'm almost there for YouTube to actually have it named uh, properly. We'll get to that in the future. Bruno. You can find me at Twitch at Dimirin, D Y M Y R N, or on Twitter at Dimirin Gaming. Sick. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we appreciate everyone that's listening or watching. And, uh, you know, until next time, uh, you guys be safe out there and. Uh, I usually say the whole wear a mask thing, but like that's kind of starting to look better. Um, obviously, get vaccinated. If you can get a vaccine, a vaccine and you're willing to get it, go get it. Uh, it's getting uh, usually readily available here in the U.S. I know across the um, in different uh, countries, it's a little harder. Um, but, you know, try it. Try as best you can. So until then, uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later. You guys have a good week. Take care.